All right, let's look at lasers. A laser, of course, is an acronym. It stands for Light Amplification by Stimulated Emission of Radiation, in case you didn't know. Uh, that's why it's in all capital letters. It's a laser, okay? Uh, a laser rangefinder is pretty simple. It operates on time of flight principle. It's a very simple equation. Your distance is going to equal your rate times the time, okay? So if you know the rate of the speed of light, which in most circumstances is about 186,280 miles per second, and you know the time, it's going to send a pulse of the laser in a narrow beam towards a target. It's going to measure the time taken by the pulse to be reflected off of the target and return back to the center to find your distance. Pretty simple how it works. Using a laser rangefinder is also very simple. You simply point and click. So that's not very hard. And there are certain advantages of a laser rangefinder that are very nice. They're very, very quick and easy to use. You point, you click, and uh, quick and easy. And it can definitely give you very precise measurements to the target. Uh, most lasers are at least within five meters of the target as far as your uh, accuracy. Some are even as close as half a meter. And uh, so that's very, very precise. And of course, they don't require the knowledge of the object's dimensions in order to range accurately. Like when you're using the uh, milling reticle, you have to know how big the target is with the laser. It doesn't matter. You just point and click and you got it. And also that means you can now range trees and hills. For example, if you're using a ranging reticle, you can't just make the assumption all pine trees are 40 feet tall. That's not, they vary in size. All rocks are exactly three feet wide. No, you're not going to be able to range a rock using your milling reticle, but you will be able to range it using a laser. So those are the main advantages of a laser. There are limitations that you have to be aware of when using lasers, and this is going to affect which laser you're going to purchase. So pay close attention. There's a thing called beam divergence. Uh, it's important to understand. Now, despite the beam being really narrow at first, you know, the laser beam seems like it's perfectly straight, but it's eventually going to spread out over longer distances due to beam divergence. Now, beam divergence of an electromagnetic beam is an angular measure of the increase in the beam diameter or the radius with distance from the optical aperture or the antenna aperture from which the electromagnetic beam is coming out of, okay? So, like most electromagnetic beams, electromagnetic radiation is basically light, okay? Now, some light is visible, some light is invisible, but uh, lasers are subject to divergence, which is measured in terms of millirads, just like uh, your, you know, your scope uh, reticle is going to be measured in milliradians. It's an angular measurement or degrees. And uh, for our applications, the lower divergence a beam is, is going to be better. This is going to be one aspect that separates high quality lasers from low quality lasers. When you pay for a high dollar one versus a cheap one is your beam divergence, how narrow it keeps that thing, how concentrated it is. Now, neglecting the divergence due to poor beam quality, uh, your divergence of the laser beam is going to be basically proportional to its wavelength and inversely proportional to the diameter of the beam at its narrowest point. <laughs> but to make a long story short, you're going to have beam divergence. It's going to spread out eventually, and it's not going to be able to give you that pinpoint reflection that you're going to need to range a target at long range. So spend a little more money on a good laser, and uh, that'll minimize that problem there is another effect you need to be aware of this is another big limitation to using laser rangefinders is atmospheric scintillation or uh beam wander effects okay now atmospheric scintillation is basically uh, it's going to occur when you have different air densities due to thermal gradients in the air you know different temperatures of air are going to have different densities and this is going to kind of act like a lens and this is gonna you know deflect the path of the beam just like a, a, a lens of glass is going to be a different density than the air. That's why it bends the light, right? So you're going to have just atmospheric scintillation bending your beam. And uh, divergence combined with these atmospheric scintillation effects and other beam wander effects, that are, there's a lot of different things that can happen. These are going to all potentially deflect the laser beam away from the target, especially when you get further out there. And they're going to give you a reading off of another object either in front of the, the target or behind it. And you're not even going to know. It's going to be 
It's going to look like a, your reticle on your uh, laser rangefinder is going to be pointed right at the target. It's going to give you a reading maybe, but you don't know if that atmospheric scintillation and the beam wander effects have skewed you off. So the beam could have taken a corner and pointed at something else and then reflected back. You don't know for sure. Another thing that you need to be aware of is beam grazing. And this is something that I kind of dubbed. Uh, I haven't found it really uh, defined before, but I've noticed this a lot. And this is going to be very problematic when you're ranging targets that are either only partially exposed or when you're ranging targets that are located in front of a somewhat undefined backstop. Now, when the beam of a laser is grazing the target from a low angle across the ground, whether it be through grass or brush, or maybe even across a really long, smoothly sloping area like unobscured desert terrain, the level of confidence you have that the target itself is actually being bracketed and not the other stuff in front of it or behind it drops dramatically. So your confidence is going to be lower uh, if you're coming at the target from a low angle where you have kind of a long gradual, there's lots of stuff kind of in front of it. And if you were to miss the target just by a little bit, by one inch, you're going to hit the hill behind the target, like 300 meters behind it or 500 meters behind it. And at long ranges, it might be di difficult to discern that mistake. And it could give you a completely erroneous reading because it uh, you missed the target, basically. Uh, there could be unseen obstructions. Some of the, the beam might be reflected off of leaves or branches in front of the target that you didn't see, uh, giving it uh, early return in which your reading is going to be way short. Okay. Um, also, you could have mirage. This is going to happen a lot at longer ranges, and the target may actually vanish into a mirage as far as laser is concerned. And this is going to also be amplified by your uh, temperature gradients in the air. So these are all your mechanical limitations to lasers, uh, your physical limitations. And uh, these are significant. This is something that's going to want to propel you to confirm your ranges with your ranging reticle. That's why that's important to still use. You don't want to just take a, a click on a laser and uh, just uh, automatically assume it's good. Now, there are certain uh, times when it's going to be good. If you have really good conditions where you have clear air. Also, fog and dust can throw off a laser, too. That can give you an early reading. But if you have a very well-defined background, like you're shooting at a target that's standing right up against a cliff or something, and it's a highly reflective target, and your atmospheric conditions are just right, you can go ahead and laze that target. And even if you miss the target due to grazing or whatever, uh, you're going to get a pretty positive reading on that. And uh, if you're not at a grazing angle, and uh, if even with a little bit of scintillation and beam water effect, you're going to get a pretty good return, and it's going to be pretty precise. Urban environments are, are usually pretty good because you have buildings, and if you're ranging a giant face of a building, that's a pretty reflective giant square target that is going to be hard to, to hard to miss. So that's going to be good. Now you got to keep in mind in urban environments, there a lot of times there's going to be power lines, trees, uh, things like that that are in between you and the target. Be mindful of that because. In, in, in that case, if you got power lines in between you and the target or something else that you're even slightly worried about, double check it by uh, using the mill scaled reticle. Do an actual optical range determination on that target to, to verify that your laser is in fact uh, matching up with that other data, okay? Because that's going to be important. You're going to want to double check these things. You're always going to want to get at least two different means of range determination, especially when you're talking about long range, because if you screw that up, you're going to completely miss. Firing solution is going to be totally erroneous. There are other limitations to lasers that you need to be aware of before you use them, and that is uh, one of the big ones is you're going to risk enemy detection, now, lasers obviously emit electromagnetic radiation, light, okay? So a sophisticated enemy could be equipped with laser detection devices, uh, which at best are going to let them know that they're being lased, or at worst could give away your exact position and probably get you killed. So uh, you want to be very careful if you're um, engaging a sophisticated enemy, like if, I don't know, uh, China or Russia was to invade with their with their full mechanized infantry. Uh, they might have their equipment uh, set up with certain laser detection devices that are going to go off and even identify where you're at. So just be advised uh, 
depending on where, where you're going, what your area of operations is going to be uh, so that you don't uh, get surprised by that. Also, lasers can be jammed. Uh, certain high-value targets, if you're scud hunting or doing something like that, they may be using jamming equipment, so, kind of like you would use on your car uh, to uh, jam your laser. And for this reason, there's a lot of the military laser designators are going to be equipped with technology that kind of pulses the laser, and it's going to be coded in such a way that it's going to reduce the chance that the rangefinder can be jammed. So it's going to be like hopping uh, different uh, frequencies, basically. And uh, that's going to keep your laser from uh, having that happen to it. Another thing to be aware of, a uh, major limitation, is that your performance of a laser is going to be dependent upon your power supply. Okay, So a laser that normally gives you a reading out to 2,000 meters very accurately uh, might be limited to only 500 meters if your battery ain't fully charged. Uh, this happens to me a lot. I got a 2,000 meter rangefinder when it's fully charged, brand new fresh, fresh battery. I can reach out 2,300, 2,400 meters, no problem. When the battery starts to even go a little bit low, all of a sudden 1,200 meters is hard to hit. And once the battery's half done, I mean, you might as well throw it away. So you, you got to have fresh batteries in these things to get optimal performance. So what are the circumstances where you will want to use lasers? Well, when determining your ranges to TRPs, target reference points, especially at long ranges, when your enemy is absent, when you're setting up your range card, you're going to want to use a laser to get real precise uh, readings of how far these different TRPs are going to be. So where mill readings are not precise enough to meet your danger space requirements, you're going to use a laser. And this is going to be, uh, you know, you got to make sure that the enemy is not going to be present uh, if he's uh, sophisticated and has laser detection technology. Also, high value targets of opportunity uh, might present themselves outside your predetermined range that might be off your range card. And you might have limited time to engage that target. In that case, you would go ahead and just use a laser. It'll give you a real good reading real quick. And, uh, you know, laser detection uh, won't matter. It, you know, this will take priority. Another thing, obviously, is if your enemy is not equipped with laser detection equipment, uh, then don't worry about it. Then just use a laser. Uh, you still might want to be, you know, confirming those ranges in certain uh, situations. But, yeah, laser will give you good readings. And obviously... Any time when your location is no mystery, like in the middle of a firefight or if you're holding down a fortified position someplace, if you're sitting on top of the embassy trying to protect it, you may need to get ranges in a hurry. And being that they already know exactly where you are, use the laser. So those are uh, places where lasers are going to be very handy. Also, for hunting applications, lasers are extremely handy because... Uh, uh, out in the middle of the wilderness, there's going to be not a lot of target reference points that you're going to know the dimensions to. Out in the forest where there's no man-made objects sitting around that you might have measured already, uh, you're not going to have any idea how far a rock or a tree is. So your only guess is going to be a laser in until the, the actual target presents itself, a deer, in which case you might not have enough time to screw around trying to mill the deer as it's walking behind bushes and moving around and turning its angles. Uh you, you're just going to want to use a laser in that case. So lasers are very nice to have. And uh, there are some uh, pretty good laser reviews out there. I'm not going to get into a whole lot of detail on this. I can kind of show you in a hurry real quick what we got going on, and then we'll move on to our other systems of GPS, maps, and aerial photography. All right, let's get out of here.